Well, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but I got it in there. Don't have to worry about noisy neighbors. There's no room for them. One new addition I'm trying is I've got two self-adhesive hooks halfway up the roof and two pieces of Velcro on the bottom so I can take my auxiliary panel and just hook it on like that and that and then it just secures the bottom with the Velcro. A little bit of auxiliary power. Now let me see. Positive to that one. It helps on these cloudy days. Well, for those that keep asking, Alpacool's still here. It's running fantastically after, what, a year and three quarters now? It was definitely a good deal. But I wanted to talk about another addition I've added to the trailer that I just keep forgetting to mention. And that's my dual battery switch right here. And the reason I have a dual battery switch is it allows me to charge two different batteries separately. And there's other reasons for it as well. I have an AGM battery which charges from my solar panels and I have a deep cycle. The AGM I keep under my bed, the deep cycle is in the back. But using a dual switch means that I can just do one battery at a time. And it's logical because when it's cloudy out and you're only getting a small amount of charge, why charge two batteries to half when you can charge one to full? So, and not only that, it isolates them because if anybody has done any research into a, a solar array, it's better to have two exact same batteries, same rating, same brand, whatever, uh, so that you're not having issues with one being dominant on the other. Where they both, they might, you, you can actually damage a battery if you charge two that are dissimilar at the same time. So having the dual switch gives you two purposes. You can charge one battery up fully and then go to the next. And you don't have to worry about the getting the exact same battery. If you, you can wait until, like when I buy a battery, I don't buy the exact same. It's, first of all, it would be expensive, chances are. And when one battery goes, I buy whatever is available. And if I see something on sale, I'm gonna buy it. So I'm never gonna have two exact same batteries. But having a dual battery switch is win-win and it's really cheap i think i paid something like 20 25 dollars for it what a bonus well it was good of some logger to leave me this nice flat table i appreciate it looks like the perfect spot for me to put my camp stove on Well, it's not exactly level, but he did leave me a few wood chips as well. And I think, get it right. That's better. Perfect. Well, my first goal is just to see if I can get the burner going. I haven't used this for a while. Yep. 
So far, so good. Okay, that's getting there. One thing about my creations, they're never incredible. They're usually merely edible. That's all I go for. And they tend to be brown. In this case, I've got some hash browns, which they're still okay. Shredded potatoes. getting a little bit crispy. There's two other ingredients that I always bring with me camping. One is zucchini. Seems to last forever. It's cheap. It takes on whatever flavor you want to put on it. I love zucchini, but I hate cucumbers. In a sandwich, they're just a waste of space. And uh, veggie dogs. Um, again, as long as they're wrapped in the refrigerated, they keep well. So, zucchini's going next. Might need a little bit more oil there. Oh. Wind wants to blow out my fire. It's not going to. I'm not going to let it. See, it's coming. It's going brown. One thing I never buy um, on the road is things like lettuce, spinach, and celery. Like sometimes I buy like a package container, like a salad. But I mean, obviously, I don't I don't have room for a head of lettuce in my little refrigerator. But it just goes bad so quickly, and uh, and I don't trust it. So when I do buy a salad. I eat it on the spot. I don't. I don't pack it up with me as I travel. I prefer the the veggies that uh, that last a while, like potatoes, carrots, and zucchini and onions. But I didn't bring an onion this time, or at least I don't have one right now. They kind of stink up the fridge, if you know what I mean. Time for the veggie dogs. There, it has a little bit of color. It's got protein, carbs. I love carbs. I don't carry a lot of spices. Salt and pepper. And a few others, um, soya sauce, ketchup, that's a spice, and a uh, little onion and garlic powder, which is probably a good idea. Let me see if I can find it. Look at that. Onion and garlic. That'll give it a little bit of flavor. Well, it smells good. Well, that's kind of it. That's my Slim Special. Whoops. Bon Appetit! Yeah, that tastes about right.
a meadow. Even the word sounds peaceful. But when you're actually in it, you realize it, it is. It's like when you go to a museum and you go through the galleries and you look at all the paintings and some of them you don't really understand. Some of them kind of stress you out, like a freeway to me. But then you go to the room with the beautiful landscapes, the countryside, the meadow, and you sit and you look at it and you say, man, I wish I was there. And guess what? You can be. This is a free meadow. There's no charge. You can camp near it. It's called Packers Meadows. And it's near Lolo Pass. But there's others that enjoy meadows as well. Which is why I brought my bear spray. Well, right now it's dusk. Sun went down about 15 minutes ago, but it's the perfect time to do a little demonstration on light bulbs. Now, some people thought that I was using incandescent bulbs, but for the last few years, actually, I've been using this one, which is an LED warm uh, bulb, uh, warm as in color. And in order to demonstrate this, I had to set the camera manually so that it wouldn't change every time I change the light bulb, change the exposure, and change the color. So what you see outdoors, you should see maybe a slight blue tint because it's usually a little bluish uh, when the sun goes down. And you can see this as a very yellowish tint. Well, let, that's this one. Let's try the incandescent bulb. Okay, there's the incandescent bulb. It's a little bit brighter. Um, it's got more of a, I'd say like an orangish color to it. It's hard for me to tell, but I think it seems it's very warm, but maybe on the amber side, something like that. Um, the big difference though, is how much it consumes power wise. Okay, now before that gets too hot, and that's the other thing, not only is it warm, uh, color wise but it gets really warm temperature wise as a matter of fact you can burn your hands with this thing if you leave it in too long I should have used a, a rag but I can get it there we go okay as I sit in the dark I've now got the Exito LED bulb watch this boom that's bright that's really bright Exito global supplier of automotive. It's an automotive light and they're actually used for uh, for your headlights and, and tail lights and stuff like that. Um, it was a little extra money, but look how bright it is. Now, you probably don't need all this brightness, but the nice thing is it doesn't really consume a lot of power for the amount of brightness you get. And that's why I really like it. Whoop, where are you going? You get back there. Well, as beautiful and picturesque as it is, I know the snow's coming. So it's best to get off the high passes and uh, down into the lower elevations. But it has been a beautiful stay. <laughs> 